Does Twitter deserve a spot in your portfolio? Let's run through the bull and bear case in about five minutes. My name is Brian Feraldi. And my name is Brian Stoffel. Brian, we recently did an hour-long deep dive on Twitter. Let's go over what they do. For those that don't know Twitter, what do they do? Who are these people? Well, if you don't know Twitter, a lot of people think that it's a social media company, but you and I both believe what it really is, is a micro blogging community where people can reach out and make connections in 280 characters or less. Twitter has a massive audience globally, over 206 million average monetizable daily active users. That's a key metric that this company continues to report and track, and it shows how many users are engaging with Twitter on a daily basis. So how does the company make money? It gets its revenue in two main forms. The first, like many social media companies, is via advertising, but it also has a data licensing and other revenue section that is growing quite quickly as well. Speaking of other revenue, Twitter has made a number of moves in the last couple of months that allow itself to engage and monetize its audience in new ways. For example, the company is in the process of rolling out a tip jar where followers can give the people that they are following tips in cash or even in Bitcoin. The company is allowing ticketed spaces. So this is hosting an online only event and allows the creators to charge an entry fee. The company has this thing called super follows, which is where when a follower can pay a premium price on a monthly basis to to support a creator. And they also recently rolled out a thing called Twitter Blue, which is a monthly fee that its users can play to get access to extra features on Twitter. So what's the bull case for Twitter? Well, first and foremost, it is an addictive tool. Well, Brian and I can speak to that. And when you have an addictive product, it usually ends up being a good investment as well. Secondly, the management has sold in the game. Jack Dorsey founded the company, left for a while, and has come back and really has a solid vision for what Twitter can become in the future. Those other revenue streams, as an example of that, and then third, we want to see what happens with those other revenue streams. Importantly, making this transition turns Twitter's users into its customers, whereas in the past, it's almost primarily advertisers. Now that's users are its customers. All right, that sounds great. But what can go wrong? Well, first, the user growth here has been slowing down. And there's an argument to be made that Twitter has a really steep learning curve, and it might not be usable by the vast majority of the population. Its product is just far more niche than something like Instagram or Facebook. Two, is the younger crowd going to adopt Twitter? The younger crowd is really moving their time and attention towards platforms like TikTok, Instagram, and Snapchat. If Twitter doesn't grab that younger crowd, it could become obsolete in the next 10 or 20 years. Three, the company's free cash flow is positive, but this figure has actually been trending down recently. I think that's because of some of the investments that they're making into the business, but that is something for investors to watch. Before we get to our final scores, we want to give a shout out to The Motley Fool. 10 years ago, Brian and I were both subscribers to The Motley Fool's flagship service, Stock Advisor, and since then have worked as contractors there. Stock Advisor has a long history of thumping the market. So if you're interested in getting half off a subscription to Stock Advisor and supporting this channel, consider joining at fool.com backslash Feroldi. All right. So how did Twitter do on our framework? For me, Twitter got a 77, which is in my investable category. And I gave it a thumbs up in my portfolio. For me, this company got a six and a half. The main reason for that is that I am still very skeptical that the network effect is a reliable moat surrounding this company's business. Fair enough. All right, so what should investors watch moving forward? First, keep a keen eye on that monetizable daily active users metric. This is a key metric that's going to show you not only is the platform remaining popular, but is it continuing to attract new users? Second, we want to look at those new products like Tip Jar and Twitter Blue. If they can really gain some traction, it would make a meaningful difference in the company's sales. Third, keep an eye on the company's partnerships. Twitter is a live platform and it goes with what is happening now. In the past, they've partnered with companies like the NFL and other sports broadcasters to really showcase themselves and deeply integrate themselves with their consumers. We want to see more of that happening in the future. Overall, I think both of us believe that in Twitter is an interesting investment, and I love it when our frameworks disagree. For me, this is an investable company, but it's not yet there for you. No, it's not. It's a product I love using, and I'm willing to admit that I might be very wrong about it, but I'm interested to see how it plays out. Well, either way, we're going to learn something about Twitter. Thanks so much for watching. If you want us to review a stock, please let us know in the comment section below which one. My name is Brian Feraldi, and my mission is to spread financial wellness. And my name is Brian Stoffel, and my mission is to publish the rules of finance for anyone to see. Brian's out.